This is Afghanistan, a country in the midst of other stands, and famous for the wrong reasons. From the first impression, you may think that Afghanistan is a cluster mess who keeps blowing up a lot of stuff. And you are probably right. But why Afghanistan is being such a pain? The short answer is geography. Afghanistan is strategically located in the crossroad between ancient civilizations. Persians to the west, Indians to the south, and Chinese to the east. There are also fearsome steppe nomads to the north. On top of that, Afghanistan is also quite mountainous, which allows distinct cultures, languages, and dialects to be separated from each other by the rugged terrains. Afghanistan has a population of about 40 million people, a diverse population which include Pashtuns, Tajiks, Hazaras, Uzbeks, and many more. As Iran, a traditional cultural powerhouse, is situated just right next door, Afghanistan is heavily influenced by Persian cultures. Most people in Afghanistan are able to speak Iranian languages. The Dari language, also referred to as the Afghan Persian, is one of the national languages of Afghanistan, alongside Pashto language, an Iranian language spoken by the majority Pashtuns. As you can imagine, due to its strategic location and geographical features, Afghanistan is a natural powder keg, a battleground since the beginning of time. The story of Afghanistan kinda began with some dudes from the Indus Valley who established some towns near the Hindu Kush mountains region. To the north, the Aksa civilization flourished. Then, some Indo-Aryans came along and settled in Afghanistan. They loved Hindu gods. Fast forward, the Median Empire came along, bringing Persian influences to modern-day Afghanistan, also historically known as Bactria and Ariana. These satrapies are at the easternmost bits of the Median Empire, because it is difficult to expand further beyond those harsh mountains. Then, the Achaemenid Empire came along, and made Zoroastrianism very popular in Afghanistan. Later, Alexander the Great beat up the Achaemenid Empire, but could not really nail down this Bessus dude because he retreated to the mountainous region of Bactria, an extremely difficult cat and mouse game. This is where Afghanistan began to gain the reputation of being the graveyard of empires. Anyway, Alexander later fell in love with a Bactrian lady called Roxana. This is the perfect epitome of the Hellenistic Age, where Greek people migrated to all over Asia, spreading the Greek influence everywhere, fusing Greek and native cultures together. In addition, Alexander also established a lot of cities in Afghanistan, which were of course named after himself, a nightmare for any postman. After Alexander's death, Afghanistan was controlled by the Seleucid Empire, a Hellenistic Empire. Then, the Mauryan Empire from the Indian subcontinent took control of Afghanistan, and made Hinduism and Buddhism very popular. Later, the Greco-Bactrian and the Indo-Greek kingdoms dominated Afghanistan, which by now is a melting pot of Greek, Persian, Indian, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Zoroastrianism influences. It was all fun and games until the nomads from Central Asia came along, notably the Uazi and the Sakas. The Parthians later controlled Afghanistan, and this Christian dude called Thomas probably came by to say hello before traveling to India. Then, the Kushan Empire, originated from the Uazi people, expanded quickly and dominated much of Central Asia. The Kushan Empire loved trading, and had diplomatic relations with the Roman Empire, Sassanid Persia, Aksumite Empire, and China, making itself very rich. The fall of the Kushan Empire gave way to the Sassanid Persian Empire in Afghanistan. Later, some Huna tribes from Central Asian nomads came along and displaced the Persians. The Sassanid Persian Empire later fell to the Arab Muslims. When the Arab Muslim came to Afghanistan, they did not fully conquer all of Afghanistan, due to the constant resistance by the states located within the mountains. Some parts of Afghanistan remained a part of the Hindu Sashi kingdoms of Kabul and Gandhara, effectively making Afghanistan a buffer zone between Muslim and Hindu slash Buddhist powers. Fast forward, some non-Arab native rulers made themselves independent from the Caliphates, notably the Tahirids, and the Safarids. 
The Safarid dynasty was one of the first indigenous Persian dynasties to emerge after the Islamic conquest. The Safarids were later replaced by the Persian Samanids, who were then replaced by the Persianized Turkic Ghaznavids. It was during the 12th century where the Islamization of Afghanistan was achieved. Afghanistan at this point was quite diverse, but it became even more diverse when the Mongolians came along. Most major cities north of the Hindu Kush became part of the Mongol Empire, whilst Afghan tribal areas south of the Hindu Kush were usually either allied with the Indian dudes or were independent. Then, Tamerlane came for round two. In the 16th century, this Central Asian dude named Babur came to Afghanistan, and was thinking of invading some new juicy lands. Thus, he invaded India by beating up the Delhi Sultanate, and established the Mughal Empire in the Indian subcontinent. Throughout the 16th and 17th century, Afghanistan can be generally divided into three major areas. The northern bits were ruled by the Khanate of Bukhara, a bunch of Persianized Turco-Mongol Muslim dudes. The western bits were ruled by Safavid Persia, a bunch of Persian Muslim dudes. The eastern bits were ruled by the Mughal Empire, a bunch of Indian Muslim dudes. As you can imagine, the native Afghans, also sometimes interchangeable with being referred to as the Pashtuns, were not happy being bossed by foreign people all the time, so they revolted. The Hotak dynasty was established by the native Afghans following the decline of Safavid Persia. Then, Afghanistan came under the rule of the Afsharid dynasty. In 1747, Durrani was selected as the leader of the Afghans by the Grand Council in the city of Kandahar. He founded the Durrani Empire, which became the foundation of the modern state of Afghanistan. This Afghan state was happily doing its own thing, beating its neighbors, being beaten by its neighbors, and beating itself up, until the Brits and Russians arrived. You see, after the Napoleonic Wars, the British Empire was the strongest dude in the world, challenged only by Russia in Central Asia. The rivalry between the expanding British and Russian empires in Central Asia became known as the Great Game, which significantly influenced Afghanistan in the 19th century. The Brits were worried that Russia might attack its precious India via Afghanistan and Persia, so Britain sought to establish control over these bits of lands. At first, the Afghans managed to beat up the Brits. The Brits later came back with vengeance in round two, and successfully established a protectorate over Afghanistan. Afghanistan thus became a buffer zone between the British and Russian empires, who drew up Afghanistan national borders, which included this weird panhandle to make sure the British and Russian empires remained separated. As usual, when big bullies draw your borders arbitrarily, you will have to pick up the mess later on. Afghanistan remained neutral during World War I, despite encouragements from Germany to beat up British India. After World War I, Afghanistan became independent, and began modernizing itself. It was more or less smooth sailing until the 1970s, which saw coups and revolutions, culminating in the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. The United States, not happy being humiliated by the Soviet-backed communists in Vietnam, decided to make Afghanistan the Vietnam of Soviet Union. The United States armed some militant groups in Afghanistan to beat up the Soviets. From the 1980s onwards, Afghanistan went downhill, as constant wars and chaos halted any economic developments. When the Soviets left, a power vacuum was formed, which caused Afghanistan to descend into civil war, with a bunch of militant groups fighting the crap out of one another. The Taliban's emerged victorious, which controlled a huge chunk of Afghanistan. The Taliban's were good friends with a lot of religious militant groups, who called for holy war against the Americans for a lot of reasons. This call for holy war sparked the 9-11 attacks, shocking the whole world. The United States declared war on terror, go on full democracy mode and invaded Afghanistan, beating up the Taliban's. However, after two decades of American intervention, Afghanistan is not fully pacified, partly due to its mountainous terrain which is easily defensible against invading forces, and also the militant groups receiving support from neighboring Pakistan and other countries. From Pakistan's point of view, 
Afghanistan needs to be under its hegemony, otherwise India might scoop in and squeeze Pakistan in between. As Afghanistan was unwinnable, Americans' troop decided to withdraw, leaving the road wide open for the Taliban's to retake the country. Ironically, Afghanistan, whom United States wanted it to become the Vietnam of Soviet Union, has now become the Vietnam 2.0 for United States. This is why Afghanistan has the nickname as the graveyard of empires, because nobody can really control Afghanistan, except Afghans themselves. And if you are wondering how Afghanistan can get itself out of the mess, a strong centralized Afghan government will probably be a good answer, although at what cost and what type of centralized national government will probably be of a fierce debate, a deadly debate which may last for the next few decades due to regional and international geopolitics. The story of Afghanistan is the epitome of a crossroads region surrounded by opposing big bullies. It is hard for crossroad regions to have happily ever after, just ask the Caucasus, Poland, and Ukraine. Afghanistan may not be on top of your travel bucket list now, but that does not mean it is a complete hellhole. Afghanistan has everything for everyone, which includes awesome natural wonders, ancient cities and monuments, cultural heritage, beautiful people, and tons of opium and weed. A good tip will be to wait for the war to truly end before your tourism visit, otherwise you might become a meat shield. Thanks for watching.